Hey there, folks, and welcome back to the Catapatania campaign. Last time, things got a little bit out of hand as we finished our conquest of the Carpatania province with our two opening allies, those being Clarencia and Olcadia, both betraying me unexpectedly uh, right at the tail end of those conquests. That was fine, and I managed to snatch uh, victory from the jaws of defeat. And then we attempted a revenge war against Olcadia, thanks to the claim we got from finishing that first mission with the help of some mercenaries. And uh, they actually brought in both their expected ally, Beitia, which I had planned around, and their unexpected ally, Boletia, who was not their ally upon war declaration, which I wasn't expecting. But fortunately for me, this trio of morons managed to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory with a catastrophically poorly planned um, counteroffensive into the Olcadian lands in which they fed armies to my defenders over here in uh, Althea, giving me a number of small-scale defensive victories, and then failing to hold me in place long enough for their larger army to arrive, allowing me to escape in time just about. So definitely a very fortunate way for this to go. This could have been a catastrophe, but at the moment we do still have the initiative. I have gone ahead and fired the very damaged mercenary company I had been using. I'm going to hire a new mercenary company and try to turn things around. I do have myself a little bit of time to work with, although not as much as I would like, as they will have to re-siege Althea. Doesn't have a lot of garrison right now, but they're unlikely to do an assault. I suppose they may, but I don't see the AI typically do assaults. So I'm expecting a slow uh, sort of manual siege which means that I've got some time to bring my levy back into my territory, regain a little bit of the manpower. We only have uh, about, well, exactly six men to regain out of our 1k levy here. But what I really need to do is bring in some mercenaries. And the question becomes, who do I hire uh, for that purpose? Now, I had previously hired, I believe this was a 3k mercenary stack, which served me fine for my original uses. But against the combined strength of these three tags, keeping in mind especially that Boletia does have a very large population. In fact, in the previous episode, I actually commented that I didn't think I could take on Boletia by itself with my levy and the previous 3k mercenary stack, let alone paired with two smaller, but still uh, contender uh, neighboring powers with reasonably strong uh, levies, larger than my levy as it stands, uh, before I recover and re-raise the 10 uh, total levy I can now do from the province, which of course I just didn't do because I was playing risky. But that, that's not necessarily going to come back to bite me quite yet, because I think I can still pull off a pretty good victory here with a bit of careful planning now at this critical moment where things really are up in the air. So I think what I'm going to do, I am going to basically do my risky strategy again, but this time go even bigger than what I did before. So I previously hired a 3k mercenary stack with a focus on infantry, and I think the infantry focus is still an important part of this as the strategic benefit of being able to do quick assaults with a lot of assault power is extremely important, and big cavalry-oriented uh, mercenary forces, even though these do have large infantry components, light infantry will get shredded by doing assaults, so the value of this is questionable. So I could bring in another 3k stack like this one here. This guy is not too far away, but I could also go for someone a little larger like uh, her over here, or go for someone even larger such as this incredible 16 cohort 8k stack over here. Now why would I go for a stack that powerful when that's overkill, arguably for this? Given the numbers we're dealing with here, we are looking at I think around uh, 6 or 7k enemy forces in total when they're fully recovered, and at full morale, that is an alarming enemy to fight. I think given the way this war has progressed with Boletia entering in the way that they did, I really can't play so risky that I hire another smaller mercenary force in the scope of mercenary force strength, but instead I should go for a larger force and then I can more safely use that mercenary force for subsequent wars. Now, the issue here is that I then have the same calculation I was doing in the previous episode about do I do a recovery period after this war or what. And I think all things considered, given what we're dealing with here, we've got at least 3k with full morale, and at least 3k, if not 4k or more, once they recover with damage morale that are all running away right now, and I think there may have been one more army as well in the fog of war. Given the numbers we're facing right here, a 3k or a 4k uh, infantry force, or I mean a mercenary force, would probably be fine, 
but if I'm going to spend 100 gold, and they're all going to cost 100 gold anyways, with the only difference being the maintenance cost, I may as well pay for a truly uh, safety-ensuring mercenary company that also takes them out of the ability of the AI to hire them. Not to mention, all three of these nations have their own manpower pools, they all have their own treasuries from which they can all individually hire mercenary companies, and the AI in this game does not shy away from hiring mercs when they think they need to. So, all this considered, given that I can only have one mercenary company as a local power, I think what I need to do is make full use of my evil slave money and go ahead and hire this 8k strength force led by 13 Marshal Lagunas Urketicus. I will have to be careful about um, how I handle the issue of uh, you know sacking or, or whatnot, but I will say that the remaining places that I could get sacks on, such as uh, Lobaton or uh, Segeta, these capitals here where I'd be, I'd be doing uh, sieges, um, I don't really care too much if these places do get damaged by sacks, to be completely honest. I'm not, not super worried. This up here is a city, so I might miss out a little bit, but I don't even know if I'm going to get up here. We'll see what's going to happen with that, but I'm not dealing with Kapitanian land, and Lobaton is a pretty small area. It's only five populations, so the loss of life over here, although this is technically um, Celtiberian. I guess this is Celtiberian up here too, but it's in the wrong region. Essentially, I'm not too worried about missing out on the... Um, the sacks and getting my, my money from that or from controlling it as we're not dealing with areas that are right in my core anyway. So with all that said, let's go ahead and hire the 8k force led by uh, Lagunas Urketicus over here in Wana. Now they will have to walk into my land and it's going to take them probably a month or two to arrive and then there's going to be a number of months of building up their morale. What we're going to do is just run over and stand with them and basically square up with them as I have myself some time before I can be invaded by the enemy coalition. They have to resiege Althea and then either siege to Tulkia to then be able to reach Toletum, or they might be able to reach Toletum right away. I don't remember how it works with fort coverage when it's two forts that are next to a tile. And this one up here might work the same way. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think they can reach Toletum right away once they siege Althea, but they do at least... Well, I guess they could technically... They could go through... I'll case to get to here and to get to Toletum like that. Hmm. They might be able to reach Toletum a bit sooner than I'd like, but I can stand near Toletum, but outside of the uh, the reach uh, in the fort coverage in order to um, recover safely. So let's go ahead with all that noted and hire the 8k force led by Lagunas. This is going to be extremely expensive, but we've got a lot of money saved up. And we're going to get a massive conquest from this. We may even go for one more conquest afterwards because we got them in our uh, in our employ. We'll see. This may end up being an even more delayed recovery period, but we are going to get full advantage from this powerful swing army in this conflict. So let's go ahead and recruit them. All right, they have arrived. Bring them straight over here. This is probably the fastest way they can go. You retreat over here. Oh, oh okay. Um, that was actually a serious mistake because these guys are now going to be hit on the way out. All right, I did not realize that that would actually recalculate it like that, so that was a mistake. I'm gonna retreat from this battle assuming I don't get stack wiped. If I do get stack wiped, that's actually not necessarily the end of the world as the mercs will still be in my employ, but yeah, I'm a bit nervous about this. I don't think we're gonna get stack wiped from a ratio like this, but I guess we'll see. They're now arriving just, um, hold on. Is there any move I can make that gets me out? No. That is a shame. Okay, well, let's, let's see what we can do here. Um, yeah, they were going to, to uh, to Tulkia before. I did not even think about that, that it would move it like that. Okay, well, this is an Iron Man, uh, campaign, so I have to live with my micro mistakes and just, uh, see what I can do. I guess one thing I could do I could save my cav by having them move separately from the other uh, army, as the cav would be faster. But then I would absolutely condemn the infantry to being stack wiped. So I'm going to hope I can just escape in time. We'll see. Um, this may be a bit of a problem. But we're going to go ahead and just see what happens here, 28th of December. That is a shame. I was so happy with my, my luck with moving out on time. but. Iron Man style campaign, or not just style, it is a literal Iron Man campaign. I have to live with my micro mistakes, and this is one of those times. 
All right, uh, what's our retreat time? We're not gonna make it. Okay, that was a stack wipe. That is a massive shame. January 1st. But at least we now can let the levy re-raise. In fact, I might be able to re-raise the levy in its entirety. Did this disaster actually help me? It might have, because now we can re-raise the levy. I think during... Oh, wow, okay. That's actually kind of huge. I didn't even think about that, that I could... That if my army was destroyed, the levy would start uh, uh, doing its cooldown until it could be raised. I think I can raise the levy during war. I can't lower a levy during war. I assume you can raise a levy during war. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, either way, the mercs are going to be our main fighting force right now. So that is, uh, that is that. Let's go ahead and get these guys organized. Put you on to shock action is fine. Okay, this is, uh, this is a little interesting to be sure. We're going to save as much money as we possibly can. Do we have any more prisoners? We don't at the moment. We just need to um, just need to keep things under control. You guys are coming back. Uh, heresy, deified the living god and spirit of the nation, Bad Ra Bahu Radha, surely breathes, bleeds, and dies just as any mortal. This is a scheme to promulgate influence of Maria, bereft of dignity, followers of the old god. Badra Bahu Ka Gyan may strike back. All right, Maria is deifying people. Okay. Right, that was definitely a boneheaded move. I, I make so much fun of the AI, but then I make kind of goofy mistakes too. But this may have actually been a secret brilliant move. Oh, they got a breach. Are you kidding me? Okay, of course the AI gets a breach on this siege. All right, well, these guys are coming into my territory soon, and they will be a... A fighting force capable of defeating probably everybody fairly soon, so I'm not too concerned. Just need to keep an eye on things. What are we going to have once we get into my territory here, 21st? Alright, they, they do reset. I'm going to just, uh, let's see, I'm going to move them to here. They shouldn't be reachable in this spot unless the enemy moves around, but then I'll see them doing that, so let's uh, wait and see what exactly happens. We did lose a bit of war score, but we do still have good war enthusiasm, but we did have some war exhaustion from that. Not great. Definitely not great. We also have 15 PI. Do I go for the the law change? I actually know I need 35 PI. What am I talking about? <laughs> it's not 15, it's 35. All right, let's uh, just move up here. I'm gonna hope that I can just let this progress naturally because if I put them into unit reorganization, the cost will obliterate my economy. This is a dire situation, but so far, not the end of the universe yet. Yeah, what are you guys doing? You're just moving around, okay. And these guys come. In fact, I might move them straight to Toletum so they're even closer. I'm gonna let them build up a bit more morale first. I should be able to win this fight when I'm at full morale, even with the entire enemy army here. I could ultimately just do the war before my levy's even raisable again, but I, I will probably still be at war when the levy can be raised, so I'll see if I can do it at that point. Scandal. Scandal is unfortunately part of an average day in the DT Queen clan council. Ordinarily, we would simply ignore such petty squabbles. However, on this occasion, the esteemed Adedomaris Carosus was found in flagrante delicto with his lover, Isacunia Ambon Ambona by his spouse Bodicacia Tutamalia. So this guy is my high priest. Oh man. He is uh, doing some stuff with this random lady and this is his uh, wife. Okay. Uh, Bodicacia Tutamalia, the spouse overcome with despair, has appealed to the clan council to have this guy stripped of office as a punishment for his uh, public vice. Um, let's see here. He's a really good high priest, so I don't really want to do that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and have him... Actually, let's see. If I do this, I lose a bit of popularity, which isn't the end of the world. Gain some loyalty on the wife, who doesn't matter at all. I'm just going to say this is none of my business. She may see him as a rival. Or no, she'll see the other woman as a rival, that's fine. This is none of our business. Not getting involved in whatever is going to happen with that. At least we got a lot of manpower room to regain our manpower. That's handy. 
You know, I might be able to scare the AI away from this. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to try this. Okay, also their numbers added up here are intimidating, but I do have the martial advantage with the 13 martial here, so we shouldn't overlook that. Alliance offer from Duniquia. Okay. This is the other remaining Carpatanian nation. They actually broke their alliances with Atawikia and Latonicia, but then they entered defensively with Atawikia. I'm going to decline this because I don't really want to actually form alliances at the moment uh, and get caught up in someone else's war. I'll only form alliances when I feel like I need an ally for something. I don't need them as my ally for anything right now. I want to actually conquer them in the future. So, Alright, let's see how this uh, siege goes here. Alright, defenders desert. I might be able to scare them off with a fake attack move, even with my low marshal. But I'm nervous about them retaliating and getting a cheeky win over my partially morale recovered. Or I mean my low morale, not low marshal. My partially morale recovered army here. How's my levy looking? Three months away. Alright. Once the levy is raisable, we definitely win the war. Hmm. Okay. Let's move to Titulkia to uh, give ourselves more options here. We might be able to scare them off and interrupt the siege, which would be amazing. With this... Oh yeah, they're, they're already starting to scatter. Did they see me coming? Okay, yeah, they broke the siege. I did uh, scare them off, even without doing a movement order, which is... This is next level um, psychology warf psychological warfare right here. I just move the mercs near them and they just scatter. <laughs> They do not want to mess with me. That's good. That's very good. These guys are coming here, and I don't know if they can then reach Toletum. They might make an attack, though, on me from here. So we'll see what they do. If all these guys attack me right now, I might be in trouble. They'd be defending in planes. Okay, they're not going to do that. I might be... Hold on. I might be able to do something... No, I would catch those guys. I might be... Able, I was thinking I could possibly keep these guys trapped here while he rebuild morale, but... Doesn't look super likely. I could probably get a stack up if I attack them here. What's the time lag? I get there at the same time, which means I would hit them. But uh, my morale's not super high. But at the same time, my numbers are so much more. I, I don't think I'm going to risk it. I'll get opportunities uh, once my morale's a little bit higher. No need to do anything too risky here. All right, 31st of July is the date the rest of our levy becomes available. All right, we've got a bit more morale. We could get here after these guys leave and hit these guys. We'd be attacking into planes. Uh, let's see. Not quite yet. I want a, maybe another tick of morale before I start doing that stuff. All right, they've re-sieged the fortress. That's fine. I'll take a defensive fight in planes over the river any day, even with everybody there. That would be completely okay. They're going to square up over here. I think that's probably a fine outcome for me. And I can even raise my levy, um, perhaps, right before this battle begins. And that, given that I scared them off, I bought myself a few months for them to have to restart the siege. And my garrison grew a little... Well, didn't grow that much, but it grew a little bit. Alright, let's... To be absolutely maximal, we're going to wait... Until we're moving after the tick. We're going to only hit 5k of them. Although I could wait a little bit longer and get my garrison involved too. I mean my levy involved as well. Hmm. I'm going to do that. That's another 10k that I... Or I mean, uh, 10, it should be 5k actually, not 10k, because it's 10 cohorts. Let's see if I can raise them and bring them in. 31st of July. Okay, there it is. I can raise them. This is perfect. Oh, they raised in two groups. That's fine. Now we got uh, the other chief involved as well. It's uh, good to note. Let's uh, gather everyone together. This army is now absolutely crazy. Okay, so um, the actual strength of my levy is 5k. So by itself, the levy would not have been able to fight these guys. So it's good that I hired marks. I hadn't thought about the levy being destroyed and then being able to get re-raised, uh, re so I could have potentially gone for a smaller work force, but you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna appreciate that this was an emergency and not uh, second-guess my own decision-making. I made the right call, 
with the information that I had. Everybody arrive, and then we'll move in here and fight them in Althea in a defensive battle, which is a good outcome for me. Alright, 16th of August, we'll get everyone organized and uh, sent off to repel the attackers at Occupied Althea. Okay, um, so you lead the way. You're gonna have uh, deception tactics. This is a cavalry only army. Actually, hold on. Heavy cav, heavy cav, and light cav on the side. You are following him, although you're gonna take over any sieges, which is fine. Shock action is the right one for you. This is another cav army, put you onto envelopment for some tactic diversity. Heavy cav in the center, and then light cav on the side. And then you follow as well. Um, light, uh, light infantry, and then heavy cab, and then light cab, and then you are on envelopment too. Okay. With all that done, with uh, Berkusa in charge, we are going to now attack into Althea as one group. 30th of August is the arrival. These guys should run away. There they go. They're not going to get out in time, which is fine by me. I'll get a defensive fight in Althea. And these guys aren't even coming in to help them. That is amazing. Here we go. Alright, the Battle of Althea has begun. And our entire army has now arrived, and we are shredding them. Excellent. And the other guys are going to come in too and join in. That's fine. The 1k force will stay out of the battle. We didn't roll very well, but we did kill more than we lost, which is ultimately what matters. And we restored the initiative here. Very nice, we are victorious. Okay, and now what we're going to do is go and attack this force here and hopefully get ourselves a little stack wipe. And then we'll see uh, what we want to do in terms of divvying up our forces to take the siege to the enemies uh, at that point. We have ourselves a timer, we shouldn't ignore that. But these guys got out of the way in time, that's a shame. We'll catch them over here, that's fine. In fact, I may want to chase... Oh, you know what? Uh, Segeta is actually a double fortress, which I didn't notice before. But we've got enough forces, that shouldn't be a problem. Alright, there's that stack wipe. Excellent. Okay, so what we want to do now, we need 2k at least to siege Lobaton, and then the rest of them could focus on sieging Sageta. I guess we could assault Lobaton to get it out of the way. Hmm. Let me think about this carefully. I could send the, uh, all the infantry to Lobatin to assault it, and then we run back up and work on Sageta. Hmm. I think we're all running to Sageta. Let me actually go to Sageta and see if I can catch him up there with my forces still organized together. Now, Sageta is Celtiberian, and it's the right... Uh, so aside from being in the in the wrong region, which I don't really want to enter that badly, I guess I could establish a presence in Terra Kinesis, and this would be the war to get some territory because I'm already I got the initiative. So I honestly may as well just conquer this too. <laughs> I'm gonna have a recovery period after this to be sure, mostly for my economy, which is currently in real bad shape. All right, let's see what we can get away with up here. Alright. We are not going to catch them. Just a battle, that's a shame. But, what do we have here? 1k garrison, it's going to be a long time to siege. I could just get this under siege and, and do the siege up here for quite a while. Or possibly do the assault. Let's see. We're going to catch some of these guys over here, that's perfect. It'll be an offensive fight in the hills uh, with the fort, but that is still... I think a good outcome for me. Alright, we stack wiped one little group, and we stack wiped the other little group. Very good. Okay, um, with this assault power we can definitely do an assault. This is going to chew through the mercs. The question becomes now, do we play a bit more conservatively and just do the siege slowly, which will take a long time, it's a level 2 fort, um, or do we do the assault and then assault Lobatin and then disband the mercs after? I think that while keeping the mercs around for further military action right after is very tempting, especially with my currently raised levy. My 10 uh, cohorts by themselves can probably handle 
quite a few smaller wars that I could pick and choose from. And I will need to recover economically. The mercs are extremely expensive. So I think what I need to do, in all honesty, is lose some of these mercs by doing an assault. Let me get, let me give it one siege tick in case I get that first siege tick breach, which would be nice, um, although I do still want to lose forces anyways. I just don't have the economy to keep these mercs going for much longer. And I, I need to... Uh, yeah, I, I, I just can't afford this for too much longer, so we need to think about the big picture here. <laughs> I just can't afford to keep these mercs going, no matter what I do here. Status quo, alright. Let's go ahead and give this an assault. I'm going to chew through our infantry very quickly, but that's fine. This gives us a level 2 fort that we control. There it is. Alright, the Siege of Sageta is 1. What's the damage like? Wow, that was a very expensive assault, but that is not too surprising given what we were dealing with here. What I'm going to do now is actually... let's see... I'm going to hold in place? No. Yeah, I don't want to use my... I don't want to uh, use up my manpower for restoring for this. Let's um, move... let's move to here. Um, we still have probably the initiative, even with our morale losses. We're going to get the monthly tick once we go into January. Try to grab this, and then we will... Also, what did these, these guys do to the city? They probably ransacked it. Looks like they pretty badly sacked it. That's fine. I wasn't going to be able to do that assault without the mercs there because of the infantry, so... Not too much to be done about that, unfortunately. So again, it's not exactly like a major location I'd want to keep for a city, so I'd probably demote it once I take it anyways. Alright, um... This... Could be... A catch situation... Let's see. Oh, they're moving here. Okay. I could catch these guys, or I could just go past them and assault Lobaton, which should be doable. I'm just going to try to assault Lobaton to get this war over with. So you come here first. Take this. These guys will have to siege something, and they're not going to be able to siege it in time. In fact, they won't be able to siege any... Well, they won't be able to assault anything because they're all cavalry. I guess they can retake some individual tiles, but... Yeah, we may as well just go for go for broke here. We did lose enough mercs to fix the uh, massive economic timer situation with the in, uh, the expenditures, but I do think we want to play it a bit safe here. They retook that. That's fine. Let's retake this, or I guess take this for the first time. There we go. And now let's go ahead and do an assault at Lobaton and get this thing fully conquered. Anyone else want to join this war? <laughs> Okay, everyone come on in. I got I got a serious army I'm not afraid to use. Alright. We're approaching 35 PI. I'm not gonna miss that. Fortress under siege. Okay. Um do I do an assault right away? Not while I've got well, no, I don't have enough morale. I'm gonna wait for my morale to rebuild. It's focusing on the morale from the infantry, so I wanna make sure the infantry in particular have rebuilt morale. So let's give it a few ticks, uh, get our morale back up. I just don't want to have the assault grind to a halt and kind of screw everything up because I'll run out of infantry to use. So let's not play around, even with a level 1 fort. Better safe than sorry, I think. I think I'm trying to siege Althea. That's fine. Let's see if we get a first tick breach. The AI got it last time, so it'd be nice if we could get it too. It would only be fair. Supply shortage? Okay, that's, uh, that's okay. Let's give it a monthly tick, then I think we'll do the assault at that point. I don't want them to get some sort of crazy lucky breach or uh, immediate win situation over here. Alright, let's see. We can probably get away with a assault now. Ooh, uh... No, we didn't. We ran out of infantry. Okay, well now we're in just a flat out siege race, which I think we should win at this rate. Your garrison was damaged quite a bit by the assault. Alright. Probably was a little bit of an ambitious moment to go for a uh, an assault there, but we did progress things here. And once we once we siege this, we win the entire war. So that's all that has to happen here, to be completely honest. If completely nest, oh, for food shortage is great. What are they going to get? Status quo. Okay, I think we're going to win the siege race. Now it is just literally a siege race, and we lost even more forces. So this was actually a strategic move in order to give myself more time with the mercs. <laughs> See, I can always justify everything I do by by focusing on the uh, the economy here. All of my catastrophic losses are actually for the greater good. Uh, Kunalava Barena. 
A female druid coming from the outskirts of Com Plutum has recently become a hot topic in Diletum, supposedly going against all kinds of traditions. Our high priest, Adadomatis Carosa, seems to have taken a particular dislike of the girl, often and viciously mocking her person in ways around the court. All right. Um, some suggest that the, removing the girl quietly, while others would like to give her more space to show her ideas and affect our religion. Maybe we could both get rid of Adidamatis Carosis and become more favorable among the girl's followers at once. She actually is kind of a crazy zeal character, 12 zeal. Although that martial actually this this character goes hard. Look at the look look at these stats. 10, 9, 8, 12. You know what that looks like to me? Is governor material, and I do need a good governor for Terakinesis. Hmm. I mean, here's the thing I could do. I could fire this guy, who is a very good high priest. He would basically become so disloyal I couldn't use him for anything. But then I could actually remove her as high priest and then use her as a governor, because this would actually get rid of her. Although this would secure her loyalty on my high priest. And my high priest has been causing me a few problems with being lusty. This is interesting. The question is, do I, do I have any other good finesse candidates floating around? Which, in my campaigns, the answer to that is almost always no. I never have any finesse. Okay, I actually have a few. Oh, hold on, wait. Um, this is her. So she's here while the event is open. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Eat finesse with four. And it's a family character, too. Her not being a family character is actually kind of nice, because her loyalty is going to be a bit more dependable. Okay, we can get away with this. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to say it's because of his previous um, dalliance that we just had the event for recently. Let's replace our high priest. Okay, so uh, we're going to have her as the high priest for now, so she builds a bit of statesmanship, but we will be using her probably as a um, as a governor, although we could also have her as just a super good high priest, which uh, she would be a good high priest with those stats. Anyways, back to the siege race. These guys are having a fight up here. What's going on? We got um, Wasconia and, uh, oddly enough, uh, Sibazatia from north of the Pyrenees fighting um, Lissonia. Okay. We could do another assault, but I don't think that's a particularly sound idea. I guess we could give it a try. No, the power wouldn't be enough. Defenders desert. Don't you dare get a breach over there. Status quo. Look at that siege luck right there. Imperator Rome is making up for all these years of siege misery it's inflicted on me. Love the look of that. Mm. I forgot to change my law. Whoops. I even said I wouldn't forget to do it. I do actually have enough um, centralization to do the second one instead, which I could go for f uh, first. And gaining, let's see here. This is always a tough call. Going for the increased centralization rate is honestly not bad, especially because I um, would like to reform sooner rather than later. It's always really fun to have your starting tribal chief become your first monarch when you do it in their lifetime. The extra monthly tyranny loss is kind of good for my playstyle. <laughs> I accrue tyranny rather quickly, but I'm not going to be destroying too many cities. There's not a lot of cities in Iberia for me to get rid of. Although all of the selling into slavery to make money will accrue me a lot of tyranny. So I think going, so between these two, going for the monthly tyranny with less monthly centralization is probably fine. The sieve change with my low sieve totals won't be amazing, and the commerce income would be amazing while I'm still a tribe. What's my commerce situation like? 0.64, not very much. No one's buying my goods because I am an evil nation of monsters, so no one wants to buy my goods. Uh, um, all right, let me go for council legal authority. By giving the Greater Clan Council the authority to make legal decisions, we ensure that all people have a voice in the running of our country, increasing our efficiency. This is probably good to get sooner rather than later, and although the loss of stability will be painful, I do have good stability modifiers right now, so it will creep back up nice and promptly. And we're conquering territory that same religion, same culture group, so this shouldn't be too unmanageable. We're going to have a recovery period after this war. That is the plan. Let's go for it. All right, this will help with our tyranny situation quite a bit. And we're just around 30 tyranny, which is probably a good place. Or, I mean, 30 stability, which is probably a good place to try to be at. All right. So far, so good. Let's just get this thing over and done with. 
Come on, 7%. Defender's Dessert, that's a good roll. Okay, keep it going. Supply shortage, finally, but we still have a huge lead on them. There's no way in the universe they could win this siege race. And even if they did, we can just come and retake it. We do have the initiative in a huge way. We may have to go and fight them to get the war score to get the peace deal we want, but this should ultimately be doable uh, at the end of the day. And I am confident in uh, victory here. We've got lack of food in one of our levies. Okay, we're running out of food now. We're gonna have some attrition problems once we chew through our manpower. But we're nearly there. In fact, we're there right now. The Siege of Lobaton is one. Looks like these guys sacked it brutally. <laughs> Fortunately, they didn't depopulate. All right, very good. Now, uh, we probably can't get the peace deal until this all transfers over. So we're gonna actually walk back this direction to try to scare them off the seed just in case anything funny happens. But once this all finishes getting transferred, we should be able to get the peace deal anyways. So we shall see exactly what we're dealing with in just a moment here. 82. Sue for peace. All right, they would take a white piece. That's a good start. Give me this. And also give me this. And then this. And that is everything in... No, this is in Terrakinesis. So, okay. Ooh. We might not be able to get all the Terrakinesis stuff as well. They would not agree to this. But they're close. This would also ensure I enslave all three sets of nobles, which would really help with my economic recovery post-war. So I think I need to go for broke here. We've put a lot of money into uh, this defense, so we're going to make them pay for it. Let's go ahead and try to kill their forces to get that last bit of... Uh, this guy's going to breach a grenade. Get this last bit of uh, war... Uh, what's the term? Um, uh, war score. And this victory should be pretty much a done deal. All right, here we come. They got a food shortage, but that's not going to save them in time. With this victory, I think we're going to have... Oh, they're not. Just kidding. Now we're going to catch these guys. Ha! Roy, really? Oh my god. All right. Um, this is annoying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move to here and then move south to attack them. All right. <sighs> Wasting my money, but has to be done. 2nd of October. I'm hoping to finish this before the end of the year, but we'll see. That would be nice. If not, I'll still end the year with my my plans, uh, assuming that this war is about to finish, basically. Shouldn't be a problem. All right, battle begins. We're going to be defending. Uh, not exactly going... Okay, there, there we go. Now they're... I was outnumbering them, so uh, for some reason the battle began with very, like, even losses of morale on both sides, but we did win eventually. That's good. Let's follow them probably to Lobaton and try to stack whip them to get this peace deal. It's within reach, barely. Let's al also go ahead and have the... No, not, not you. I'll have uh, you send away... Um, actually, you need to go in your entirety. Disconnect and run down here to grab this too for a bit more war score. Actually, we need to grab uh, Alta as well. Um, okay, you split off the 500 light horse to come and quickly grab Alta just to get a bit more war score. And that might be enough to uh, turn things around. All right. You guys actually. I guess head down here. I don't know where they're going. I guess they're headed to here. Interesting. We're nearly there. Right, we're gonna catch them here, actually. All right, these guys will arrive ahead of everyone. I wasn't expecting them to come here. I guess it's the only unoccupied spot left, so that actually does make sense. Right now, let's all head together as a group. These guys get here slightly early, so let's tell them to uh, not do that. Give it two days. Now come in like that. Okay, they should agree to this deal now. I'm going to save the rest of their forces, because those uh, those levy manpower units will go back into the population that I'm about to conquer. All right, so we're about to double the size, actually probably more than double the size of our nation in terms of land territory. This is a 17 AE deal. This is a very, very aggressive peace deal, and I am taking a big recovery period after this one. We need to fix our nation after this crazy war, but... 
through uh, some very careful maneuvering and very, I think, uh, good uh, strategic thinking, we managed to transform this possible campaign-ending disaster opening into a massive victory, which we now need to make sure we don't let uh, kind of overrun the campaign and mess everything up. So this is a giant peace deal. We're entering a new region. This is going to require probably a five, if not a 10-year recovery period to really get under control, but we shall see what we're going to deal with here with this peace deal. Let's go ahead and go for it. Increase my rank to regional power as it should. All right, here it is. Look at that. Diatiquia has grown. The border situation is a little questionable, but we will fix that later. All right, my tribal chief, the Celtiberian local power of Olcadia accepts our generous peace offer. Olcadian Celtiberia Maria Donalis to Diatiquia. Uh, Boletian Celtiberia Maria, uh, Maria Dionalis to Diatiquia. Boletian Celtiberia Septentrionalis to Diatiquia and Baitian Celtiberia Septentrionalis to Diatiquia. All right, uh, let me first do all of these things. We're going to go ahead and, let's see, imprison everybody because my economy is in serious trouble. All right, my tribal chief, Brokusa Karosus, we've increased in rank. We are now a regional power country instead of a local power. Since we are now an independent country with at least 25 territories, we can now guarantee that we can no longer create defensive leagues, which is fine by me and the other modifiers there, including, critically, two maximum mercenary armies available now and one more clan chief. All right, very good. Everybody stop. Let's go ahead and find the mercs. Here they are. Go ahead and fire these guys. Uh, we may look at this. 1k left of 8k. We, we took full advantage of this mercenary force. And we can go ahead and lower the Contestanian levy at long last. There they go. And I will now actually go ahead, now that we're in an opportune moment, and do unite the Karapatani as I said I would last time once the war was over. We're going to change our name to Karapatania, adopt the Federated Tribe Government form. We would uh, annex any subjects we had, which is actually something that uh, is kind of interesting. But um, I, I don't have any subjects, so it's fine. Doletum gains emergent center of civilization for the rest of the game. Extra pop growth of plus 0.10%. Extra fort defense of 20%, which is actually quite good. And 5% more local civ level. And we get two free province investments as well. Um, our people yearn for a leader strong enough to unite the clans which consider themselves of the Karpatani heritage. It is clear that we are the only viable leader skilled enough to do that. And we will become a federated tribe, which will reset our ideas, but I no longer need all of my ideas right this second, so this should be okay. We will lose out on the 12% tribes of unhappiness, but I want to get this going ASAP to get these bonuses as early as possible. Plus, we get four tribes and pops of state, culture, and religion, I think, in my capital. We'll see where they pop up. All right, here we are. Diatikui has wisely enacted Unite the Kaot Patani. We are now the orange uh, menace himself, Kaot Patania. Here we are. With our capital, of course, at the Letum. Not sure where the tribes even ended up. But having done that, let's take a look at the missions. Now we can go ahead and grab this for extra popularity on Brokusa. I may as well go for it. I will miss out on four popularity, but I want him to have maxed up popularity. I think this is fine. Plus, this gives us access to Triumph in Contestania. A free city on Toletum. That's actually really good. I didn't realize that would give me a city for free, so that is incredible. And Triumph in Toletum for extra. Citizen happiness and population output. Good to get that uh, early, to be completely honest. Let's go for it. Triumph in Contestania. Toletum becomes a city. The coming of the city of Toletum. Our extension of new privileges and investments into the local infrastructure have seen Toletum grow from relative humility into a true Carpatanian city. While it still has some way to go before it can rival the great cities of our age, the past two years have ushered in a new era of growth and urbanization in this territory. These are the best of times. Here we are. The city of Toletum has been founded. We can actually, if we want to finish this mission, which I don't really want to, as we've got more use of it to, uh, to take advantage of in the future. But let's go ahead and consider the governor situation. I'm also going to go ahead, by the way, and I think demote the city of Saget. I don't need this to be a city. It's not a particularly good location for a city. I suppose it is central in the uh, province up here, but these locations along the river, such as uh, Saldui, are better, I think, for cities. And anything on a minor river would be better too. So let's go ahead and while we're in a 
the mood of thinking about cities demote this city as well. Uh, so again, it becomes a settlement. After I first uh, destroy the forts here, as I think... Uh, let me think about this. Yeah, I'm going to destroy at least level 1 fort, then we'll revoke city status. That's fine. People won't be happy here, but they're not going to be happy anyways. Got some loyalty problems, we're going to worry about that in a moment. And then I'll come back to whether I want to destroy the other fort in a moment, or the other level of fort. We have a farming settlement here for vegetables. That is probably going to be staying. What else do we have? Over here, another fort in the settlement of Lobaton. We're going to keep that fort here for now while I consider the bigger picture situation. Uh, let's see here. Any other buildings around here? This is glitched out, but there's nothing here. We've got a farming settlement for grain. I probably will keep that as well. As for whether this fort here in Althea or the Tatulkia forts will stay, probably not. These can probably both be other things. Let's go ahead and destroy the fort in Tatulkia. The um, Althea fort honestly can go as well. All right. Now, uh, I think that is all the new territory examined. Let's go ahead and uh, attend to our prison and uh, release the baby, but sell everybody else into slavery. That is going to fetch me any good value. We have got ourselves a bit of an economic uh, <laughs> collapse to reverse here at the last minute. Fortunately, we finished the war with plenty of time to spare for that. Let's release you. Release you. Sell you, though. Sell you. Sell you. Lots of tyranny building up, but we got time to lose it as well. You're a youngster. I'll release you. Sell you. Sell you. I already interacted with you. Sell you. Release you. Sell you. I'll sell you, and I will... You know what? I'll sell you. Alright. That should be everybody. Alright. I also have another capital import uh, available for our capital. To let them. Alright. Um, what do we want? I could actually get double precious metals, which is probably worth it for the national assistant happiness and for the value. I could also get glass, which is really good. We can reach more people now, so that definitely helps. Could also get stone before we do any building. Not that I think I will do very much building right now. Uh, let's see. What is my population distribution looking like at the moment? We have a number of slaves now, and they're not going to be too happy. Tribesman happiness is a priority for sure, because a lot of these new populations are tribesmen. Anything that gives me national tribesman happiness is probably something I need to consider quite strongly. Woad is not available. What about furs? Furs doesn't give me national, though. Yeah, that's a shame. Do any of my other provinces that I just got have trading slots? No, they don't. Okay. As for the new governor, by the way, now I'm coming back over to that. I think it is going to be worth it to actually use this amazing High Priestess that I just uh, got. So let me go ahead and uh, I could bring this guy back in, but he's going to have big loyalty issues. So I'm going to just ignore him. Let's get uh, the slightly less good and also not a family character, but still pretty good. Um, Isaac Cunia and Bona. Actually, hold on. Is No. You know, this is the woman that he cheated on his wife with, isn't it? Yeah. Now that's quite the ironic switch switcheroo. He's, we're going to bring in this guy's mistress to replace the druid who came in. Well, that's fine. And so we're going to go ahead and head up here and assign... You should be hopefully fine once I put you in office. 910 is pretty good. What do we have here? Loyalty of 40. That's going to have to do. As for the policy up here, point 20 is manageable. Point 20 is manageable, and in fact, manageable enough, I'm going to go ahead and go all in on assimilation policy. It's a little, feels a little risky, but I think this is doable. We're even in positive over here. What is this? Am I playing in Parrot Rome? Positive loyalty trend on a conquered province? This is what we get when we've got same religion and same culture group. I'm just not used to this after the Roman campaign. <laughs> uh, we've got Borderlands going on here. Actually, ran out of political influence. All right, we'll switch this over to assimilation once we uh, once we can. Over here, it's mostly Kapitania. No need to switch that. 
All right. Um, as for where the capitals will be, actually, first let me do the uh, let me do this thing. Let's see. Um, what's my economy like? Okay. Also, let's decrease the pay now that we are not going to be in wartime. Lower fort maintenance as well. And then yeah, still not great. Um, not sure if this is accurate. I guess it's because of all the forts we've got. So speaking of which, uh, let me consider the fort situation here. This fort up here does feel pretty necessary for our northwestern border. This fort down here as well. I could move this fort if I wanted Dunites to be the capital of Credulia Orientalis. It's already the capital location picked, so that is handy. It's the right distance from Toletum. Uh, well, it's a little close actually to Toletum. Actually, there's an argument for doing... Yeah, you know what? Uh, Satiliki is a really good location because it's on this river. It's two tiles away from Toletum, so that's uh, really uh, optimal fort coverage. And it's otherwise... It's on the major river and the minor river, and it's in a good central location. So this will be the planned capital, which means we don't want to build a fort over here. I will keep this fort in the meantime, though. And then uh, over here... There's no fort in this area, but that's not a huge deal. Once we conquer Lobotania, which we could do at will, they've got no allies at all. Maybe we sneak in a little Lobotania war once our levy is ready. Also, 13? Wow, we've got three more. I'm not sure where these extra three cohorts came from, but I'm not going to complain. Yes, these guys are ready to raise again in four months. I think we do a little Lobotania war. Quickly grab this with a little assault. I've only got three... That is 1,500 light infantry, them. that's probably enough. And I can just siege it manually if necessary. This will really clean up our borders. Oh yeah, definitely. But do I have a claim on these guys? I do, okay, good. Good, good, good. So this will be our, um, this will be our fort down here at Pons Rugio. As for Celtiberia Meridionalis, let me think about the capital location situation. Argument for Alta, because it is two away from Toletum. Hmm. Plains on a small minor river. Beia Superioris is also not a bad spot. I could also keep Panzerugio as a uh, permanent uh, capital and city over here, as it is on the river. It's two away from Toletum, so it's in a good location. And it is also then two away from... Well, it's two away, well, it's three away from Ulta, so there'd be a fort coverage hole right there. Hmm. Let me think about this. So if I've got uh, Satellitia, Toletum, and then I have Ponzerugio, I could alternatively have um, Egelesta as my capital instead of Ponzerugio. It's actually also on the river. It's just barely on the river. It's not in as good of it. Like, Ponzerugio feels like it's in a slightly better location. And this is also... Well, then down here, is there a good capital down here, is the question. Probably yes. Um, let's see. Uh, Luminium. Could be solid. Or something that's on the river directly. Admirum would be... Be a little close to Satellitia. But it's two away from Toletum. Luminium's a bit too far away from Toletum, although the, a hole in my fort coverage here wouldn't be a huge deal because it would be internal. Luminium's also a good forward location, although I'd have to conquer these guys to get that, and they're allied with Godmania. I guess I have to fight them anyways. Um, let's see. If I had... This is the capital. This is the right distance away, as is this, actually. Admetium, or Admetum is also the right distance away. Having um, Egalesta as the capital seems a bit strange, but it is, it's is—it's on the Minor River. It's in a good kind of corner location, although it will be in the center of the region once I have the whole region. But it is still a good location for city plains. It's on the, the Minor River. That's the best kind of tile I'm going to get in this province anyways. I could do this and then get rid of this fort and then have... Well... Hmm... Okay, let me do it like this. Um, I think uh, Igalesta is the best location in this province, given the way it lines up with my planned capital at Satellitia, and either Admetum or 
Laminium. These would both be fine for for this purpose. It'd be the same. Yeah. The question then is from the northern direction. How are things looking? Agalesta. Then I could have a city maybe at Opta. I could have a city at Opta even if it's not the capital. I could also make Opta the capital or Agalesta the capital. I don't know which one's better. What do we have here? We got livestock here, so this could be a farm tile. Cloth is better for a city, I think. And Agalesta is in a slightly better location, I think, in the, the grand scheme of things. All right, let me move the capital down here to Agalesta. I have the whole province now, so the capital shouldn't move around. 30 loyalty, this should be fine. Move the capital to Agalesta. And I could start building a fort here, although I don't really have tons of money to spare for such a thing. Hmm, we'll come back to that. The fort at Lobaton probably wants probably should stay for now. Although getting rid of it would help me build up some money, so that's the other way to look at it. Okay, as for Celtiberia Septum Trinalis, um, the capital should probably be at Sageta while it's fortified, even if this won't be the capital long term, but I don't really want to lose a lot of loyalty up here. Having it be at Colenda should be fine, as it's protected by Sageta anyways. And I can always, uh, let's see. Yeah, this shouldn't be a huge problem at the moment. Just a temporary situation. But I think the capital up here would eventually be uh, Saldui, so it's a plains on a major river, so then we can have a port. Although it could also have a city that lines up with, you know, oddly, uh, Beia Relicta lines up pretty well with Aglesta. And it would also line up, well, it'd be close to Opta. Hmm. It's too far away. Opta was the city. Let's see. Nothing is... These are all too close, I think. I guess I could have Beia de Solata. That is um, the right distance away. It's one, two, or one, two from Opta. And then it does line up perfectly with Saldui. So I could make Beia de Solata the capital for now, and then plan to build a city there and a fort there, and move it from Sageta down this direction. With the fort here... Okay, here's the thing. A fort here with coverage... And then a fort here with coverage. Actually, because this is impassable. <laughs> Iberia impassable, look at that. So this actually, like, it doesn't look like it, right? A fort here and a fort here. But coverage extends to here, and then this coverage extends to here, and this doesn't go anywhere with the impassable. So this actually does block off this border, oddly enough. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit to this plan. I'm going to commit to this plan. We're going to move the capital to here as this will be a, a city. All right. And then we're gonna go ahead and we are going, because I want uh, slaves to come here instead of to uh, Kulenda. And then we're, what we're gonna do is we're going to, let's think about this for a minute. I could get, all right, let's do it like this. We're gonna fully commit. We're doing our recovery period. We're fully committing to the plan. Destroy both these forts, trade for stone. So we're gonna cancel our sheep for a moment, trade for double stone. So now with double stone, we're gonna go ahead and build a fort here for 129 at um, Egalesta, and then we're gonna build a fort at Beia Desolata, which I may just refer to as Desolata as a shorthand. I wish I could rename things in this game, that'd be pretty cool. It's probably a mod that lets me do that, not entirely sure. I guess I know how to mod Imperator Rome, hopefully, so I guess I could literally rename it if I wanted to. I might do that, just uh, so it's called something a bit cooler than Beia Desolata. It's kind of a mouthful. I could probably just call it Desolata and as a shorthand, and no one would really have a problem with that. All right, so if I destroyed one more fort, I could then build one more fort, but I don't think I need to build one more fort with the way that I've planned this. I think we're looking fine, honestly. Now, I could also build something else in Toletum, which now has more capacity. I would like to get a port built, but I just don't have the money right now. I will have the money... Although, I will, once these are built, I'll, again, not have a lot of income uh, because of the fort maintenance cost. But uh, our economy should be basically stable. It's going to be basically in the black um, and not particularly in the green. But it can only go up from there. And our national overview situation is manageable. Yes. Okay. And we have got the new ideas. Um, we will get the tribesman output and pop permission speed once we match these. Of course, we need more PI before we... Can match those so that is going to be 
the long-term plan for the recovery period. I will also note, by the way, I didn't mention this previously, that Form Greater Iberia is the, um, the longer-term goal of the campaign. You can guess what this involves, but basically conquering a bunch of key locations and for some reason the entirety of the Northwest area. I don't entirely know why, but we also have to be a monarchy or a republic. We're going to be a monarchy, of course. This is a level three formable, or tier three formable. Change your name to Greater Iberia. And we get some very strong bonuses for a Toletum. And we also get National Spirit for a very long time, 20 years, uh, basically, with very strong bonuses and a bunch of other amazing things as well. This gives us claims in all the rest of the regions, in case we're missing anything at that point. But lots of cool things planned for the future, which will be coming up in the next episode of the Catapatania campaign. This has been a fun episode where we started off in the most dire of straits and are now in the most promising of positions with uh, still a bit of time to go before the end of the year and the beginning of our first five-year recovery period, possibly of two, possibly just of one. We'll see what we need to do. Although I may sneak in a few little wars to clean up our borders and uh, pick targets that are diplomatically isolated when I have the chance with my levy recovering very soon and with a very strong levy that is certainly doable. So stay tuned for more Katapatani action coming very soon. And thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you all next time.